If you feel like you draw better with shapes and cleaning things up rather than using lines for everything, watching this might help you organize the chaos that is the bajillion layers you need to keep track of. And in order not to get lost in said chaos, I mostly keep track of four things. The sketch, the color draft, the detail draft, and the paint over. Let's elaborate on each one of those. First up, the sketch. I like to keep my sketch in a folder first if there's more than one layer, and I set the blending mode to linear burn for darker lines. Multiply is another option, but I prefer linear burn because I like how the colors of the lines get darker and more saturated when you color the sketch layer itself and under it. You can see that the sketch now has different colors. That's because I usually also color the sketch layers themselves using alpha lock. But I only do that after I finish making the color draft, and I fill the sketch in with a color that blends well with the color draft so that the sketch blends better with the rest of the painting. Now that we've mentioned the color draft, the color draft folder is where I keep the flat colors and the lighting plan. For the flat colors, I still color separately per object because it's easier for me to make adjustments if I keep them separated per object. If the color looks a bit out of place, I can easily fill and replace it separately. For the lighting plan, this is where I usually plan where I want the lights or shadows to hit. I only think of two things, the light family and the shadow family. Sometimes I just use a multiply layer if I'm working from light to dark or an overlay layer if I'm working from dark to light to make things easier to plan the lighting. It's important to note that I plan the big light and shadow shapes here, not the small ones, because it's just easier for me to see which parts I want to be in shadow or light if the chunks are big enough. So what I basically do is work from big to small, always big to small, so I can cut them into smaller pieces of tasks later on. Now that we're done with the color draft, we're on to the detail strap, which is what I like to call the very first group of details sandwiched between the color draft and the sketch. This helps me plan the bigger shapes of the details like this chunk of hair here. If I immediately drew small strokes and hair strands and stuff, I get to focus on the small details that don't really matter until the finishing stages, and I don't want that yet. The planning I do in this stage is very similar to what I do in the rough sketch and lighting plan layer, which is essentially going from big to small. When I'm planning, here is the big flow of details like the form where I put the reflected light and the ambient occlusion which just means the darkest parts where light doesn't hit. Now once that's done, the fun part is creating a mask for the sketch folder and erasing the parts you don't need. Now what is a mask? A mask is something you use for tentative decisions. In a mask, erasing just means hiding that part of the layer. So you're not really erasing the content of the layer, you're just hiding it. In Clip Studio masks, you can just use an eraser or paint with any brush using a transparent color to hide parts and use any color to bring those parts back. But in Photoshop masks, you'd have to use a brush and paint in black to hide or paint in white to show the content you hit. Basically, only use grayscale to hide or show stuff in that layer. Remember to make sure to select the white thingy at the side as this is an indication that you're selecting the mask and not the layer itself. And finally, one more thing I keep track of is the paint over folder. This contains all of the stuff that I paint over all the layers. This is where I paint over the parts and gradually fix edges because I feel like my eyes see the mistakes better when I see the shapes compared to when I'm just drawing using lines. When I'm already in the paint over phase, I usually erase the sketch folder using a mask. I also clean up the silhouettes of the objects and add lines and all that jazz in this stage. This type of layer management and process just personally works best for me as of now, so it might not work for everyone. Everyone. But you might want to refer to my process if you feel like you work better with shapes and if your style is more painty and sketchy than clean. Use this process as a reference to form your ideal workflow. Take some things out and add some. Go crazy. Find whatever works best for you.